there's a good reason the checkout lines are so tight. Let's say you're waiting there, and after you take one more look at your cart, you see there are certain things you don't really need, so it would be better not to buy them. So you're looking around trying to find a spot to leave them somewhere aside. Good luck with that. Checkout lines are designed like this so you can't find a place to put these items down. So you make the subconscious decision to buy all these things after all. Take a closer look at your cart before getting there or just stick to the list to avoid this. Also, the checkout line is probably the most tempting part of the supermarket. All those candies, shiny magazines, gums, and cool gadgets are there to grab your attention while you're patiently waiting your turn. Many people just automatically grab something from there while waiting, even though they weren't planning to buy it in the first place. Have you ever seen someone in front of the supermarket washing the shopping carts? Of course not, because no one does it. Yep, shopping carts are really filthy. So many people touch them during just one day, let alone this whole time they have been in the store. It would be good to wash your hands every time after shopping, or you can wipe the handle down before using it. You'll see some stores have wipes right next to the entrance. Spraying water makes fruits and vegetables look pretty. Plus, it adds weight to them, so you might end up paying more for them. These are the two actual reasons why workers spray them with water. No one does it to keep them fresh. Plus, spraying water won't keep fruit and vegetables fresh. It will just make them rot more quickly. Spraying water on them or not, wash all the fresh fruits and vegetables you bought. You know how you sometimes like to pick up a pear or a peach to see if they're ripe enough and put them back down if not? Well, you're not the only one who thought of that, so stick to washing your hands every single time you come back from the store. Check out the packages of fruits, vegetables, and meat you're buying. Even though you have to be prepared, you won't be able to see everything that's inside. One Reddit user took a picture of bacon so others can see what the visible slice looks like versus the rest of those packed in a way you can't see them well. Another user shared an interesting trick to help them feel how much meat a pack of bacon actually has. And this only works at low temperatures. So the fatty bits become stiffer before the meat does when the bacon is cold enough. That way, if you pick a cold pack of bacon that's kind of stiff and hard to bend, you have one full of fat. If you feel it's kind of squishy and you're able to fold it in half relatively easy, it means there's more meat and less fat. Here's one more interesting Reddit catch. It's not a hack supermarkets use. It's more like a bonus on your vegetables. A whole new ecosystem on your veggies. It's for those situations when you want some extra flavors, but are running out of ideas. Fish you buy in supermarkets is often mislabeled. When it comes to meat, it's pretty lax with testing because you can tell the difference between, let's say, pork and beef relatively easily. But it's harder to do it with fish. Some studies showed that a third of all fish on the market is not labeled properly. That means some expensive pieces such as salmon are replaced by other fish that look similar. The majority of that counterfeit fish is safe to eat, but there are some of it, such as snake mackerel, that can cause not so pleasant stomach issues. Don't trust expiration dates so blindly either. Of course, there's a certain number of weeks milk can remain good after packaging, but supermarket meat departments are a different story. They do their labeling there with their own devices, which means regulations are not that strict. In other words, if an item is about to expire, but it still looks good, supermarkets can simply put a new label on it. That means they can extend the expiration date for a couple of days, sometimes even more than a week. If possible, look for the food at the time when it first comes to the shelves, or find some trusted butcher nearby. But if you stumble upon meat or something else that's about to expire or has already passed the due date, you can negotiate for a better price. Just show the product to the staff, and in most cases, they'll be willing to lower the price. They'll probably have to put it on the discount anyway, so this way, it's just easier for them and better for you. So always check the expiration date. 
Pay attention to this because supermarkets mostly won't get shut down after they fail an inspection. Inspections are way more focused on restaurants, so you're more likely to hear a restaurant closed because they fail health standards rather than a grocery store. So going to a small local bakery instead of buying supermarket bread and generally trying smaller local businesses might not be a bad idea. These guys usually care a lot about their reputation. This hack grocery stores use is not so gross, but it's still worth knowing. They mostly place expensive stuff at eye level. Most of the population is right-handed, so most of us do the same movement reaching for stuff we want to buy. So things that will bring supermarkets the most profit are right there, at eye level, front and center. Sometimes, there will even be some additional colorful markups on these more expensive products that will make you buy them before even checking the others. So, look to the side and look up to find better deals. Don't just grab the first thing that gets into your visual field. Also, things that are geared towards kids are placed a little bit lower, so they're at eye level too. One Redditor shared a photo from one supermarket where they had to cut out the bottom of laundry baskets so shoplifters don't fill them up and walk out. Another commentator said this is just a display version. That way, if you want to make a purchase, employees will go to the back room and send the basket to the registers for when you're ready to pay. It feels so exciting when you're going through those colorful newspaper inserts with special discounts. But they don't make these to save you money. Their main purpose is to make you buy things you don't really need, but you'll get them anyway because you believe they're on sale. Double check all the coupons you're about to use. Sometimes the special price they advertise is the same as the regular price without the coupon. Bulk buying deals might sound great at first, but they can be a trap. First, the price difference between individual products and those in bulk doesn't have to be that big. And you might end up buying way more stuff than you need. That means that either you'll buy too much so the items might go bad before you have a chance to use them, or you might eat and drink way more than you usually would. And neither of these options sounds good, and it's definitely not saving money. For example, one Reddit user noticed there's a pack of four blades instead of five, even though the price is the same and they haven't even changed the packaging. Check the prices of packages considering their weights too. One Redditor shared a photo of their catch, which might be tasty, but also quite expensive considering the size of the package. They usually shop for groceries online, and since this week was pretty stressful, they were tired and didn't check how tiny this block of cheese was. Well, it's a nice Sunday afternoon and you're shopping at your regular grocery store when you stumble upon a bloated package in the fresh produce aisle. You check the product information. It seems well within its expiration date. Then why the unusual shape, you may wonder? The answer is not always straightforward. For some types of fresh products, such as meat, fish, or seafood, sometimes even salads and cheese, scientists came up with something called MAP, or Modified Atmosphere Packaging, to ensure that these types of products with a relatively short shelf life stay fresh for as long as possible. A combination of gases is introduced in the packaging. It happens even before the product reaches your local grocery store. A French professor at the Montpelier School of Pharmacy stumbled upon this method after he noticed that fruits tend to stay fresh for longer periods of time in low oxygen storage conditions. The types of gases in mapped packaging can vary from product to product, but the main idea is to replace or reduce the content of oxygen. It's generally replaced with either nitrogen or carbon dioxide. Keep in mind that just because a bloated bag mm. of salad is within its expiration date, it doesn't mean it's always safe to eat. The gases inside the bag may very well be there for their own purpose, but they can also be a sign that the product is spoiled. That's why the best course of action when shopping would be to check if the product is not expired. If it's still within the day, mm -hmm. check for any unusual odors or damage to mm -hmm. the packaging. 
If something seems off, it's best not to risk it. You can reach out to any of the store staff if you have any questions or concerns. Most supermarkets these days have a layout which allows for a logical shopping order, like buying non-perishable items first, then adding refrigerated or frozen products. Fruits and vegetables should come last since you won't want them at the bottom of your shopping cart. Nobody likes a squished tomato. While I'm on the subject of fruits and veggies, try to get them earlier in the morning if possible. Veggies that have been sitting out all day may lose some of their shape and texture, while others may be a bit wilted away. Quick tip on waste management, never buy more produce than you intend to use in a week. Most fruits and vegetables don't even last that long, so it's best not to give in to cravings. Shopping on a full stomach might help with that as well, just as much as going shopping with a pre-made list of things you need to buy. Thoroughly inspecting the package of every product might save you some hustle later as well. Refrigerated products need to feel cold to the touch, while frozen ones need to be solid and with no sign of leakage. When you get home, make sure you refrigerate all the necessary items as soon as possible. Generally, they shouldn't be out of the refrigerator for more than two hours. Otherwise, their quality won't stay the same. Buying potted herbs from the grocery store may not be the first thing on your list, but it's surely something to consider. Not only are they available for a fraction of the cost, but they're also easy to grow and take care of. Just picture a nice herb garden right there on your balcony or even in the kitchen. Wouldn't that be nice? You'll always have fresh basil to top a mouth-watering pasta dish. Since you're still at the grocery store, pick up some coffee filters while you're at it. You may not have a machine at home that actually uses filters, but there are a lot more things you can use them for around the house. They can be used for straining liquids, safely stacking delicate china in your cupboards, or even polishing windows, or shoes for that matter. If your favorite fruits and vegetables are on sale, but buying large quantities would mean they go to waste, consider freezing them. You can stock up on items for smoothies, especially for the colder season when there are limited options for fresh fruits. And don't just grab the first thing on the shelf, especially if it's likely to go bad quickly. Stores restock their produce following a first-in, first-out layout. So the items at the back of the shelf will always be a tad bit fresher. The same goes for tea if you prefer it to coffee. Switch to buying loose-leaf tea, and you'll not only reduce the cost, you'll also be able to make your own homemade tea blends. Loose-leaf tea also has a stronger flavor than tea sold in tea bags. As for the other household stuff, stock up on items such as light bulbs, paper towels, or batteries. Chances are you'll always be needing at least one of these items, so it's best to buy them in larger quantities when on sale. They never go to waste, and let's face it, it's always annoying when you run out of batteries at home and your TV remote stops working. Hey, tell me about it. Try to reduce the number of times you go to the grocery store to buy just one item. It's inefficient, and most likely, you'll end up buying things that you don't actually need. Uh, That shopping list starts to make a lot more sense now, doesn't it? Another list worth making, the one containing whatever you have in the fridge. Try to create such a list at least twice a week. Meal planning for at least a week in advance will also help you reduce impulse buying. If you already know what you'll want for dinner on Wednesday, why add anything else to the card if it's unnecessary? At the same time, start getting creative with your leftovers. There's no need for them to go to waste when you can mix and match or add some additional herbs and flavors to spice them up. Store leftovers in transparent containers for added visibility, and don't be afraid to set out a leftover day during the week. It's also nice to look at them as ingredients rather than leftovers. Use extra leftover pasta or steamed vegetables for a frittata or an (laughs) omelet. Blend together cooked vegetables with some tomatoes to create a pasta sauce. Put together some wraps for the next day's lunch with anything from leftover cooked rice to meat and vegetables. Or, if you're really looking for the easiest method to save leftovers, you can always turn them into soup. Last night's vegetable side dish can turn into a wholesome lunch if you simply add a can of broth and blend it all together. Even a two-day-old loaf of bread can be salvaged if you cut it diagonally, sprinkle the slices with some herbs and olive oil, and pop them in the oven for a couple of minutes. You'll then have yourself some nice homemade croutons for that previously mentioned soup. 
A little label know-how never hurt anyone either. Be on the lookout for ingredients you've never heard of or those you can't pronounce. An item that usually has more than five ingredients listed on the packaging should be avoided. Even the way you carry your groceries in the supermarket can affect how and what you buy. If you prefer baskets to shopping carts, you're more prone to impulse searches. That's what a study published by the Journal of Marketing Research claims. It happens due to the effort you put in actually carrying the items around. Choosing a shopping cart will most likely make you comfortable enough to browse through enough products and read labels thoroughly. When your grocery list is not too big, go for the self-checkout aisle if available. Studies have shown that impulse purchases are lowered by up to 32% if you actually scan your own items on the way out. That's because the regular checkout line is specially designed to keep you from letting go of any items you might have reconsidered buying. There's literally nowhere you can put down your undesired products, outside of your grocery cart. And if there's anyone else waiting in line behind you, good luck sliding out. The food arrangement on the shelves can also pose a threat to both your budget and your habits. Since people are more inclined to buy the items they see first, the most expensive products are placed at eye level, and the budget options are placed on the top and bottom shelf. Take your time and scan your aisles of interest. You'll be surprised to see that most items placed on higher or lower shelves are often not only more cost-effective, but also less packed with additives or artificial flavor. Hey, be careful. It's a jungle in there. You can only cut a diamond using another diamond. It's the hardest natural material on our planet. Between retrieving the stones from the earth and the finished products you see in jewelry stores, a diamond goes through a complex process. Before they cut it, people need to consider which shape is best for the stone, so they don't throw too much of it away. One town in Norway, located north of the Arctic Circle, wants to become the first time-free zone in the world. The sun doesn't go down there at all between May 18th and July 26th. The locals don't want to follow the classic concept of time to get the most out of their 24 hours. Since they have constant daylight, they can't just act like the rest of the world. You can sometimes see people playing soccer in the middle of the night there or mowing their lawns and painting their houses at 2 a.m. The Leaning Tower of Pisa is tilted because the soil under the building's surface is really soft. This was probably frustrating for the people who constructed it, but they eventually figured out the soft soil is part of the reason why the tower is safer from earthquakes. Because of the softness of the soil and the tower's stiffness and height, the tower doesn't resonate with earthquake vibrations. So the reason the tower is tilted is exactly why it's still standing, even in such an unusual position. You don't actually see pitch black in a pitch black room. It's a specific phenomenon where you see dark light, or as people also refer to it, brain gray. It's a dark gray background many people see in the absence of light, and some even call it visual noise, since it's like an ever-changing field of small black and white dots. Watermelon is definitely one of the most refreshing and hydrating fruits, especially during hot summer days. But if you try some watermelon-flavored candies like gummy or hard candies, they're usually either mouth-puckeringly sour or very, very sweet. They aren't at all like the actual watermelon. It's basically impossible to replicate the great taste in the overly acidic-tasting watermelon candy. That's because its main chemical compounds are rare and watermelon flavoring uses blends of cheap synthetic artificial flavors. Making high-quality realistic flavoring for candies and juices is possible, but would cost businesses a lot. Some people love the fake watermelon flavor, but most stick to their perception of how that fruity taste should be and are not fans of it. Why is there an expiration date on a water bottle? Of course, water doesn't go bad, just like salt or sugar. But even though water doesn't go bad, the plastic bottle does. When it starts expiring, it leaches chemicals into the water. It won't make the water toxic, but it can change its taste, so you might not get the mountain spring fresh water you expected. Another reason for the expiration date on bottled water is there's a rule all consumable food products, including water, need to have an expiration date. Also, many companies that produce these bottles use the same machines for bottling sodas and some other beverages, and these do expire. So it's way easier to just put a stamp on all bottles. 
whether necessary or not, than to buy new special machines just for bottles of water. How come identical twins don't have identical fingerprints? The pattern of ridges on your fingers is unique and stays the same throughout your whole life. Which is why fingerprints are a valid feature when it comes to identification. Two people could be sharing identical fingerprints, but the chances here are less than 1 in 64 billion. Identical twins have slightly different fingerprints because the patterns are affected by both environmental factors during prenatal development and genetics. Fingerprints are not just something that's unique to humans. Gorillas and chimpanzees have fine ridges on their fingertips too. They also seem to be unique to individuals. So we all probably inherited this from a common ancestor. Why does a green screen come in green and not some other color? When you film someone in front of a green screen, it's a technique known as chroma keying. The green color gets digitally filtered out so that you can replace it with any footage you want to add. If the subject you're filming is wearing something green, the background image fills that in as well. That's why it gives the impression the person you're filming has holes in them. And green is good for this since it resembles human skin tones the least. Why do you feel dizzy after spinning? There are hairs lining the sides of tiny tubes filled with fluids that are located in your inner ear. When you move your head, these hairs detect acceleration, which means a change in the speed of a certain object. If you spin for long enough, your brain can't deal with the constant turn signals from your ear, and the way it adjusts is to zero them out. At the moment you stop, your ears report zero turning correctly, but your brain is still in the mode where it actively cancels this out. It actually thinks that you have now started spinning in the opposite direction. So, how can ice skaters do all those amazing things on the ice and not feel dizzy? When doing a pirouette, they lock their eyes on a fixed point and keep it that way. They whip their head around really fast when they're not able to twist their neck further. Their spins are really fast, so they gradually train to overcome the feeling of dizziness and learn how to keep their eyes horizontal. That way, the view is spinning around one axis only. Neutron stars aren't that heavy, they're just really dense. So dense that just one teaspoon of a neutron star would weigh 1 billion tons. They are the densest and the smallest type of star we know of. Imagine squeezing 1.4 times the mass of our sun into a sphere no bigger than 6 miles across. They're dense because of the way they form. The balance between an outward pressure process in its core and the gravitational force that tries to contact a star hold it together. When a star loses its supply of fuel, gravity wins, contracts the star, and eventually makes it collapse. When stars between 8 to 20 masses of the sun collapse, this squeezes their core to be super dense. Their outer layers rebound and BAM! Here's a supernova. It leaves behind an extremely dense neutron star. If a star has 20 solar masses or even more, the core doesn't collapse into a neutron star, but into a black hole instead. When you spend a day at the beach playing volleyball, swimming, or doing some other physical activities, you expect to be exhausted. But even when you spend a whole day just chilling around, you'll probably end up just as sleepy. Your body still gets very tired because it's doing a lot, even though you can't see it. First, it's always working to maintain your internal temperature. When it's hot outside, it requires way more effort, and your body cools off in a way it dilates your blood vessels. This boosts blood flow and helps your blood get closer to your skin. Over there, it can offload excess heat. That's also why some people blush when they're hot. You sweat more when it's hot outside, again, to cool down. And your metabolic and heart rate both increase, so you lose a lot of energy even when you're just lounging around at the beach. Why do animals have differently shaped pupils? The pupil is a hole in the iris of your eye that lets light pass through the retina. The iris muscles change the size of the pupil, which affects the amount of light that passes through. Because our muscles are placed in a ring that contracts equally towards the center, our pupils are round. This brings certain benefits. It provides consistent focus over the whole field of view. But circular pupils are unable to constrict as tightly as some other shapes of pupils. Animals that hunt or are prey to bigger animals evolve to have big, sensitive eyes at night. Bright daylight is just overwhelming for them. That's why they have an extra set of muscles that pull the pupil into a narrow slit shape in daily light. Predatory animals have vertical slit pupils, like many snakes and cats. 
Such pupils help them to have sharper focus across the horizontal field of view and determine better how far their prey actually is. Animals with horizontal slit pupils like sheep and horses don't have sharp focus at the right and left edges, but they have wider peripheral vision. That way, they can spot predators coming after them a lot better.